Hello there, dear viewer, and welcome to part 2 of the complete guide to Vokri, the minimalistic Skyrim perk overhaul. As this is part 2, if you need some sort of an introduction to what Vokri is or, and what these videos are, please watch part 1 where I go over the warrior skills. This episode is all about the thief skills, which for the purposes of this series does not include archery. That was covered previously, so I can have the same number of skills to cover in each episode. So let's get to it and start with light armor, which is now also the unarmed skill. Hitting things with your fists will advance the skill and we get a full perk branch for unarmed combat. We also get a few extra perks supporting a very mobile and agile combat style. Let's start with the punching line though. First off, after taking light armor mastery, we can start unlocking ranks of iron fist, which will grant you a bonus to your unarmed attack damage equal to up to 30% of your current stamina. This by itself means means it is now possible to make a reliable unarmed build that is not a Khajiit and without restoration looping. All you need is high stamina, preferably with high stamina regeneration. The Khajiit will still be the best unarmed fighters of course, if you aim for maximum efficiency. But the point is, you don't have to. As far as I can tell, current stamina means all your stamina as it is at the moment of executing the attack. So that includes all stamina buffs you may have from potions, items, blessings, etc. But the benefits diminish as your green bar gets depleted, hence the need to regenerate stamina fast so that you can return to your maximum stamina faster. Luckily, we still have the absolutely essential Windrunner perk on the rightmost side of the skill tree which will increase the stamina region. Moving up the unarmed branch we have flurry of blows to ranks. It cuts the cost of unarmed power attacks by up to 50% which already is a great boon because it makes the previous perk more effective in the long run. But flurry of blows also gives your unarmed power attacks a 50% chance to stagger enemies and some chance to disarm. This restores the most basic functionalities of the unarmed skill from oblivion and given the speed of unarmed attacks can be stupid powerful. There is an enchantment in the Summer Mist mod allowing you to power attack when out of stamina. Your damage output would be greatly diminished, but the 50% chance to stagger still works and in some fights, especially one-on-ones, can be arguably more impactful than sheer damage, making your enemy completely useless in a stun lock. There are also ways of increasing your chances to stagger an enemy with power attacks. There is the Parturnax meditation in the vanilla game, there is the Lord Stone in Andromeda mod and there are self-targeting power attack enhancing spells in both Odin and Triumvirate mods which can do that and much more. The final perk in the branch is the Key Strike which infuses your unarmed power attack with random elemental damage of 60 points. This damage will scale with elemental perks in destruction and the relevant potions and item effects. This can be paired with the strikes line of spells from Odin to a devastating effect. So with two or three other mods you can make your punching characters a real force to be reckoned with on par or even superseding some fully armed fighters. And even though the Fists of Steel perk has been removed from heavy armor, it is still doable and viable to play a punching heavily armored tank. The unarmed perks in light armor do not require you to actually wear any armor, and the skill will rise, albeit rather slowly, from punching alone, even without a single light armor piece worn. This means you can still use and perk heavy armor for the defensive purposes, while taking only the unarmed perks in light armor and nothing will clash or diminish your effectiveness. It can get rather powerful considering that the entire left side of the heavy armor tree is dedicated to punishing your enemies with stagger, knockdown and disarm after they attack you. It's definitely a build I still need to try in this mod. All the unarmed perks only work for unarmed power attacks with both hands empty, which means you can't combine them with the juicy Vokri block perks unfortunately. Pity, I wish there was a perk, let's call it uh, Captain Tomrio at 100 in the skill that allows you to benefit from those perks when holding a shield. That's a lot of talking for just one branch of perks, but they really open up a whole new spectrum of possibilities and it needed to be said. Now jumping right off to the rightmost side of the skill tree, we have the mobility perks, the familiar agility and windrunner still work as they used to in vanilla, well, uh, slightly differently, but more or less the same. And there are a few extras, most notably the evasive sprint, possibly one of the best perks in the mod. It cuts all incoming damage by 50% when you sprint in light armor. It may not sound like that 
amazing perk, but consider that your lightly armored characters will most likely regenerate stamina rather fast and therefore be able to sprint a lot. With a vicious or valorous charge perks in their weapon skills, you usually open up every combat with a sprint. Same goes for shield charge and block. By the way, shield charging works with elemental protection, which means that with evasive sprint, you are approximately 75% protected against all elemental damage when shield charging with all three perks unlocked. This makes scouts and similar lightly armored warriors very effective against wizards and dragons. Late game. Even with no particular shits given towards shielding yourself against mages. Lightly armored shield users can, at one point of the playthrough, decide to drop any resistance enchantments trying to avoid damage using the player's skill and timing, and using those item slots for improving their offense. This little perk is an absolute godsend, even after the saddest nerf in Skyrim modding history. <laughs> it used to negate all damage, you know. But we can benefit from mobility even more with the War Dancer perk, which increases our damage output when in all light armor. An unblocked hit will disable this buff for a bit, but with quick reflexes or slow time shout it is easy enough to avoid it. So light armor, as advertised on the mod page, is really different from the heavy armor experience now, focusing more on mobility and dodging, rewarding the player for avoiding damage altogether. Let's move on to something more practical, lockpicking. Uh, I am kidding a little bit, but the skill actually has some useful perks now. You get the Dwemer Automaton line of perks, with which you can can first disable them with a lockpick, then turn them to your side, and even buff their attack damage once they are on your side, of course, armor and movement speed. Very cool for all Dwemer themed builds, and there is so many ways of making cool Dwemer themed builds. I have a playlist for that, actually. There is also a treasure hunter perk branch, starting with Looter, which increases the amount of gold you can find in chests by up to 100, and other containers by up to 10. <laughs> The perk can be taken early, even on your second level up, so it can, over time, increase your income greatly. Skyrim economy is uh, what it is, so it may not on itself matter that much in longer playthroughs, but I learned that hunting for enchantments is easier when you can buy them easier, so if you use a mod increasing the number of enchantments in the game, like Summer Mist, and therefore it may be harder for you to track down one specific enchantment, shopping sprees may be the most efficient while still immersing way of getting the one you really need. Such a situation validates a build a specking in barter perks from speech and this particular line of perks in lockpicking. Next on the branch is the treasure hunter, which will increase the chance of weapon or armor piece to pop up in chests in dungeons. At the point when the perk can be taken, you are likely to have collected quite a few of your build's key items, but you may consider this perk for non-crafting builds for sure. The last on the branch is the Archaeologist. It looks cool on face value. Uh, special chests, so mainly boss chests, will contain six extra armor pieces or weapons. I think it includes staffs. I, I may be wrong on that, but 80% sure. Sad thing is, late game you will mainly need this perk if you are an avid collector. Some non-crafting builds may have use for it, people willing to have an OP super well-geared follower can have some use for it, maybe, and people who wish to rely on staffs can have some use for it. Such builds could also use scrolls a lot, and there is a scroll branch in enchanting. I like the vibe just coming from the names of these perks, archaeologist, scroll hunter, sounds like a build itself, but overall I would advise take these only for very specific builds that you know from the start will need a lot of items and won't craft them themselves. There is another small addition to lockpicking, which is just the best, just mm, top notch, the Dungeon Master. It cuts damage you take from traps by half and increases the damage your enemies take from them five times. Even the first bit is a good idea for low health or low armor characters, but the fact that luring enemies into traps will now result in an almost guaranteed kill is insanely satisfying and suits all kinds of character ideas who try to rely on their smarts and tactics. The perk requires 70 in the skill, so you may need to focus on training the skill early just to extract the most value out of this perk. Would be nice if there was a weaker version of the perk available slightly earlier, because it is one of those character-defining perks, but overall the perk is gold. 
The 100 perk is also changed into the Lawyer perk. Lawyer is a name of uh, a build I would prefer not to make. By the way, it turns all locks of Adept level or lower into a very easy lock. Not sure why would you like to waste points on this, uh, but I guess we already have like 4 or 5 useful perks in lockpicking, so let's not get greedy. Now, more on the subject of shopping sprees, let's take a look at speech. It retains all its original functionalities, except the intimidation and persuasion perks were combined into one perk, eloquent, and allure is replaced with kinship, which improves the prices from merchants of your race. I guess it benefits Nords the most? Other than that, we have a new barter perk called private stock. Again, a perk that would be more useful if it was available earlier, but then it would be completely overpowered. It makes every merchant sell additional stuff like enchanted items, spell tomes, alchemy ingredients, and the perk is a bit like the archaeologist. It can be useful for characters in constant need for expensive items like scrolls and rare ingredients. It can help you round up the build if you have many mods altering the random loot, but mainly if you do rely on those items without the ability to make them yourself. In any other situation, I wouldn't bother, especially that there are more useful perks in the speech tree itself. There is a branch allowing you to recruit any animal in the world as a wild companion, which is not the same as an animal follower or a pet, so you can have all of that, a whole menagerie. It's a very short branch, it starts with speak with animals and then at skill level of 7, you can get the Beast Master, which buffs that wild companion with extra damage, HP and movement speed. I always recommend getting a Frost Troll as your wild companion, yes they count as animals, because they have natural health regeneration, which you can buff further with a perk from Restoration called Inspire. This means your buffy troll is very unlikely to die on you and will be an excellent meat shield. An argument could be made for a Saber Cat, as they are already quite fast and deal decent damage with their leap attacks. They can be both a great distraction and a good source of extra damage. And then we have the Shout perks. To begin with, we have the Tonal Harmony, which restores all three attributes by the amount equal to Shout's cooldown when you shout. This can be very useful early game, but the returns diminish over time, first because you will need more healing than most Shouts can provide this way eventually, second because you will most likely shorten the cooldown of all shouts later in the game. Never mind though, because Tonal Harmony is a prerequisite for some much more useful perks. Next up, the branch, we have two ranks of Wards of Power, which will improve the effects of all shouts by up to 50%, which includes increasing damage of fire breath, increasing the duration and magnitude of slow time, and even improve the speed of a weapon affected by elemental fury. This is a must have for characters wishing to rely on shouts a lot. Remember that slow time shout can be also improved with fortify alteration potions, which means your Thum masters should always consider at least some speech and some alchemy investment. Then there is Scald. It reduces your current cooldown by 5 seconds with each power attack you land. This can be cheesed greatly with some fast and light weapons, but is quite useful for all of them. Naturally, combining this effect with the amulet and the blessing of Talos can easily make you shout twice as frequent or even more so, and given that the overall power of your shout will be already improved when this perk is taken, it seems you need all these perks to make a proper tong build. Finally, at 100 we have the Dovazulan, which gives, each time you shout, a 1 in 4 chance to immediately finish the current shout cooldown. It is best used with Scald, so that when this roll fails, you can still reduce the cooldown with your own actions. I absolutely have to remind you that there is a little mod called Summer Mist, which has enchantments reducing the shout cooldown, and they will combine very nicely with these perks. There is Rolling Thunder, which gives you a chance to refresh the cooldown with each kill, and the Deep Breath, which, when you shout, grants a chance to reduce cooldown to 3 seconds. Both these enchantments scale with your enchanting skill, meaning you can exploit Restoration Loop or Alchemy Enchanting Loop to make them bonkers. Let's move on to 
pickpocket. It has some cool additions carried over from Ordinator. It also gets a few perks merged into one and it has perks that make picking pockets much more profitable. Leftmost branch is focused on this, specifically the payday perk increasing the amount of gold your average Skyrim Joe will have in their pockets. Conspicuous wealth giving them more valuable items like gems, enchanted rings and spell tomes and the master thief giving you a 100% chance at stealing all gold from a citizen with zero chance of detection. The description of this may be a little bit confusing. You don't need to actually pick any gold from anyone with this perk unlocked. A large amount of gold is simply added to your inventory when you activate someone who hasn't detected you and that's that. It can be quite a lot of gold. Cut purse is a merged perk increasing your chance of pickpocketing keys, jewelry and gems all at once. And at the top of the middle branch we have two ranks of lawless times, which will remove up to 200 gold per day from your bounties for non-violent crimes. Most importantly we have two ranks of death emperor, uh, with the first one being available pretty early at skill level 40. It gives you special cursed coin you can slip into the pockets of your enemies. It will with both ranks unlock reduce the armor of the enemy by 1500 and apply 150 weakness to magic. This can be combined with one perk in alchemy, Alkahest, which cuts the armor of poisoned enemies by half. Essentially heavily armored humanoid opponents will be turned useless. There's also a perk in illusion, reducing armor and resistance of enemies influenced by a calm spell. Pity it doesn't all uh, work against all types of enemies, because it can be used to defeat bosses with a common iron dagger or, or, or a shiv or a fork. <laughs> So let's move on to alchemy, a skill that has always been useful, but here in Vokri it gets quite a few build defining extras. Most of all, stimulants. This drug, this narcotic, this magnificent spumet is now mine. A perk giving you extra magicka and stamina regeneration when under the influence of a potion or food. Getting more benefits from food is cute, but this can actually be stacked with perks increasing both those regenerations from restoration and light armor skills. And it is perfect for alchemy users because alchemy is perfect for hybrid characters. If you are a type of person who always needs all three attributes, you will need alchemy to temporarily buff the underdeveloped part of your hybrid. Characters like this should perk alchemy if possible and if it suits the concept of course you know immersion. And they could always use some extra regeneration. And above that perk we have adrenaline which increases movement speed when under the influence of potions or food. In vanilla there isn't that many ways of increasing movement speed but there are many mods big and small allowing you to build up sonic speed. Summer Mist is again just one example. A few perks are aimed at builds relying chiefly on alchemy. Slow metabolism will increase the duration of potions and food, which coincidentally also means the benefits from adrenaline and stimulants will be extended. And at the top of the left branch we have double toil and trouble, which will double the amount of potions you create which has green thumbs as a requirement, so you will also have twice as many ingredients and then get twice as many potions per ingredient used. An industrial production can easily exceed your demand, so you may consider installing the Field Medic mod, allowing you to inject your followers with home-brewed potions because what else will you do with all those consumables? The Poisoner branch has also been expanded with Concentrated Poison now having three ranks and increasing the number of uses per poison application to six. This is useful and convenient for a lot of combat styles, but my favorite example are combat archers. If you play one, you can easily notice how good a simple poison of slow can be. They are easy to craft, as in the ingredients are everywhere, and the advantage in movement speed is key to a combat archer's success. Well, now you can slow down several enemies and then choose whom to focus fire on. Then, as I mentioned, we have Alkahest, which simply removes half the armor rating from enemies affected by a poison. It can be insanely powerful when combined with a good dagger and sneak attacks and is coincidentally also quite useful to combat archers. The Plague Doctor will apply weakness to poison and disease to nearby enemies. This will stack with weakness to poison you can mix into your poisons already, building up some spectacular weaknesses allowing you to use poisons even against poison resistant enemies. Then 
Then at the skill level 90 the Gourmet becomes available, which gives the alchemist vendors around the world a small chance to sell Jarin Root. Jarin Root is an ingredient you can usually get only once per playthrough, which can be used to craft insta-kill poisons. I don't think I need to advertise this perk. It is a very neat idea to make this ingredient available outside of the Dark Brotherhood questline after a lot of grind has been done. You will still be unable to hoard like hundreds or even dozens of them, but insta-kill poisons are obviously a last resort thing anyway. You can't hide from me. Now we can finally move to the playstyle, the finding skill of Sneak. Let's start with the Silent Roll perk, which now costs some extra stamina to perform and has two ranks, with the second rank decreasing the chance of you being detected by enemies by 100%. But it gets even better when you reach the completely new perk, the Dodge Roll, which simply makes you immune to all incoming attacks and spells when you roll. Basically, you get Dark Souls style invincibility frames at the cost of three perk points. Not that that this game uh, really needs it, but it is cool and fun and characters lacking armor rating and or magic resistance can put it to great use. This is probably also one of the reasons why the evasive sprint in light armor was nerfed, as it originally did the same thing but with much less effort and timing. Now the dodge roll is truly unique and can still be used as part of a charge attack with the appropriate two-handed or one-handed perks. The Vanilla Shadow Warrior perk is also slightly nerfed by Vokree, it now requires only 90 in the skill but has a 5 seconds cooldown. It can still be combined with Escape Artist, a new perk at the top of another branch to get even more mid-combat sneaking and disappearing. It's a bit out of order, but let's actually have a look at that Escape Artist perk. When you enter sneak mode mid-combat, you will now make every enemy searching for you abandon their search. It doesn't sound like much at face value, but remember that at the point when you can unlock this perk, you already should have your build being capable of hiding mid-combat via muffle invisibility effect, fortify sneak items and potions and other sneak perks. So effectively it means that each time you sneak you end your current combat. This can be abused horribly with effects and powers that are triggered when the fight starts, like Okato's recital spell from Apocalypse Mod. My monk is built pretty much entirely around this insane loop, which allows him to refresh three power attack enhancing spells pretty much at will. Link in the description. <laughs> Naturally, the perk also works wonders when combined with Shadow Warrior. Now, the sneak attack perks are mostly unchanged, uh, although the description is changed and is slightly confusing, but they work the same. And you get extra ways to get extra damage when striking from behind with the back stab perk for the dagger users. Then at sneak value of 80 you have cloak and dagger giving you an extra 6 times critical damage when attacking from invisibility. The shadow warrior now makes you invisible when you roll, so you can often pull off a rather satisfying roll sneak attack combo. On the right hand side we have perks improving your chances to hide in combat and generally impede detection. We have blind spot making it harder for nearby enemies to detect you and we have the fog of war perk decreasing the chance of detection by enemies in combat, which naturally combines very well with the Shadow Warrior and Escape Artist. Finally, there is a much needed perk of the Shadow Caster, which makes your destruction spells two times more effective against enemies who are not detecting you. They can be searching for you, so the eye indicator can be partly open but they can't be fully detecting you. This perk should be combined with Quiet Casting from Illusion, which requires 40 in that skill, while the Shadow Caster here requires 40 in Sneak. So this convenient combination can be achieved rather early. Remember also about Muffle, which you can get from the Silent Movement perk, but also from the Predator's Grace boots, which grants you a complete and pitch perfect silence of movement, meaning enemies who don't look at you will be unaware of you, even if you actually don't sneak. This concludes the Thief skills episode of the guide. We will go through the magic skills in the next one. Some of those changes and additions are extremely satisfying, so it should be a suitable conclusion. For now, remember to like, comment and subscribe, and if you can, consider supporting me on Subscribestar. The links should be in the description. We will see each other again. Bye bye.